Welcome back to another episode of Lake Lot Build. My name is John, and today we are going to work. I got styrofoam all over me, so forgive my appearance. Today we are going to be working on how do you put your Romex wire in the light deck. So I will show you what I have started with. So I am going to get my garage door put up here before too long. But in order for that to happen, of course, I need my drywall up there uh, so I can put my track up there and all that for the, for the garage door. But first of all, I need my signal wire that goes down to the little centers that are at each corner of the door. And so what I did was I made my little channel, which I'll show you here, right there. And I put it along there. And then I put it along there, do, 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 do. and it comes out right there. Now, the nice thing about this is that, you know, you have two and about two and a half inches. I think it's like two and three eighths or something like that. But just for, for the purposes, we have two and a half inches, which is deeper than my drywall screws that are going to go in. So the nice thing is, is that I can set my little electric chainsaw and go all the way in and run my channel and stick my wire and push it all the way at the back. What's so nice is my little framing pencil works so well as a plunger to push it all the way at the back. There's enough styrofoam to keep it from falling out, from popping back out. So now, got that completed, let's go over here to the Romex. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different and it's a little bit cumbersome. I'm gonna go come up here on the ladder, so forgive me here. Okay, so up here, we have our steel pieces that run the length of the roof, right? This direction. And I'll show you what they look like because I have a couple that were left over and so we took them out of the styrofoam before we got rid of the styrofoam. So these are the pieces right here. And so what I need to do, if you can think this thing is turned on edge, like up there, I gotta go over the top of them back down. I don't wanna drill a hole through there and run my wire because it might be too low and the screws might hit but the other thing is is that is the edge of the sheet metal which can be very sharp and can cut and then scratch my Romex wire so what I'm going to do is go over the top of them so if you see here these are all rounded so when it comes over the top it's all smooth so I can just go over the top now let's go back over here Show you what I have started. Okay, so I made my channel for each one of these here, and then how do I get it actually over the top? And I was like, I have no idea what kind of tool I'm going to use that's going to be able to poke in there and make enough hole for my Romex to come through. So I came up with a piece of leftover rebar. The edges of this are almost like a rasp, and it works awesome. So I just go in there, and I just go on this side, and then go on that side. And so the two pieces that meet, it just slowly works it out. And so I have done the first one, and I'll show you right here. Gosh, what a mess. To make this turn right here, there is a, that's one of these that sits on this top plate. So I couldn't go just straight up and make the turn. I don't know if you can see it way back in there. I had to come back out a little bit this way, so then I drilled into there so that I could see where it pops up. Now, with that being said, my hole is deep enough and my turn is deep enough that my screws that go in for my drywall right there will not penetrate that depth. So I'm not worried about a wire or a, a screw going into the wire because I have that past two inches because that's a two by six wall. So I put that in the middle and I had plenty of room to, for that section. So now I'm going to make my way and it is laborious, I'm telling you. So if you guys are gonna use light deck, factor in a little bit of extra time to go over the e top of each one of those. And it's not the stripe part, it's not in between, it's the over the top is where, how do you get that wire 
over the top and then come back out. And that's where the labor comes in. And it's not hard labor, it's just time because you got to do it for each one of them. So I'm going to set it up over here and uh, we'll see how fast I can go. Okay, well, I made it. Uh, I got a couple little pieces to push back in there, it looks like, but uh, I'll turn around and show you. I'm very happy. So, right there, I'll just push it on and then I'll put it in my box and then stick the box up in there. Screw it into the, uh, um, into that piece of steel there. So, that's what it looks like. Okay, so it has been over a day and I have been putting drywall on the ceiling and uh, so yesterday at the end of the day I started working on the garage door. So let's take a look and show you what it looks like. Oh, I think that's going to be gorgeous. Right now it is uh, 39 degrees this morning. And uh, so I got my hat on. So I'm going to take you guys inside now or go through the front door and uh, let's see what the house feels like for the first night that it has been closed up and see how well an insulated our house is. So let's go take a look here. <sighs> oh my gosh. I bet it is at least 65, if not closer to almost 70 degrees in here. It, uh, I know you can't feel the temperature, but this is amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, so let's go in the garage here and uh, I'll show you the work that I've done. Um, so I'm back up here. So yesterday I was able to, I got the vertical uh, tracks, got all that put together, got the vertical tracks, and I was able so the garage door, you know, doesn't want to fall or anything. So today I'm going to work on where it makes the bend in the horizontal tracks. But the first thing I needed to do, of course, was I needed to put the drywall on the ceiling. So I have put the drywall on half of the ceiling. Um, I didn't want to do all of it yet because uh, it's hard work and I wanted to get the garage door put in and so because I have siding hopefully that'll start next week and to be honest I was just tired of bringing all my tools and putting them in my car back and forth and back and forth and so now I can lock up the house and I can store all my stuff in here and I can pick up exactly where I left off from yesterday but nevertheless let's go through some things I got my over there is where the uh, the light will come in, and then out the edge of it will be my sensors that go for there. Um, I ran my wire over here. I'll either make that a junction box for my garage door, or I'll put a switch on it so that if I'm not here, I can literally turn the garage door off so that the can't be cloned or anything like that, or somebody can be able to open it in a different manner. So um we'll do that part so today's work is going to be the rest of my install which are my horizontal track 
and then what else do I have here? Oh, this piece. So this is a uh, stiffener to truss that goes across. And um, I have the space for the one on the top part, but I was given two of them. And I don't know if I need one in this section, but it doesn't line up. So I'm gonna to have to call the manufacturer today and have them look at my order and see specifically with these panels on one side, if there is a reason that I was given two, and if so, where does that occur? Does that occur here, where you have the pull from your garage door? That's usually why you have a stiffener here, anytime that you have a garage door opener, that when it wants to pull, it doesn't want to bow that section. Now, do I need another one here? Or do I need one at the bottom? So what is it that I, why do I have two? Uh, but the instructions don't show it. But some of the videos that I've watched stated that some of them have one, some of them have two, some of them have it on all the panels. So I'm gonna have to call the manufacturer and see where the piece, this style that I picked out, where does it fall? So I'm gonna work on that today. So. I'm going to continue building my garage door.